Okay, how's everyone doing? Um, okay, so it looks like most people are staying on here. So before we get started, I want you guys in the comments to kind of tell me where you are at as far as your social media, as far as your knowledge of social media, where you like to share mostly, where you're the most consistent, where your team and your prospects are. I always kind of like to know that. <laughs> Chelsea was sending me memes. True. Don't you ever stop, please. Um, but that always gives me a good idea of the audience and that is helpful for sure. So, okay. So it's the only social media happening is Chelsea sending memes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I want to know why you guys are on here. What are you looking for as far as gaining knowledge? Because um, <laughs> I'm reading the comments over here. Okay, minimal, occasional reels. Um, so what are you guys hoping to get out of social media savvy tips? What are you, what are you looking to learn more of? Um, start a TikTok. Okay, see, I'm still not over there yet. My husband, I hear him like giggling half the time in another room and I'm like, he is on TikTok, I know it. Um, so I kind of just like to get a good idea of where you guys are at. And I appreciate the honesty over here. People saying they're in a social media slump that they haven't been as consistent and you guys, that's okay. Just know that we all kind of go through like the lulls of our consistency with social media, because sometimes social media can kind of become a lot and it can get frustrating and just kind of feel like a negative place. And I mean, I have grown my business on social media pretty much from day one. Um, I think most people know me on here, but if you don't, um, as Allison introduced me, my name is Jen Gaskell and I have built my business almost exclusively on Instagram. But with that being said, I know that a lot of people are surprised when I say that the majority of the people that I have signed up from Instagram to my young living team, I have known at some point in my life, maybe I haven't talked to them in 10 years, but it's not just this huge influx of random people that I don't know. Um, obviously there are strangers that sign up with me, but I want you guys to know I'm speaking from a place of reaching the people that are already in my life through social media, but also reconnecting with a lot of people from my past from social media through social media. So I want you guys to know that I'm not just like some influencer that signs up like a hundred people with like one story, like that is not my life. I wish, but that's not. So, um, I hope that that is relatable for you. Um, and I feel like navigating social media these days can be really difficult. Um, because there's so many different platforms and how are you supposed to pick where to be? And then you don't, you know, you feel like, okay, well I should be over here too, but like, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on this one. And it's, it's just hard because before you know it, like the next big thing is coming up. So, you know, where do you share and how much should you promote? And there's just so many things that you have to think about now. And honestly, you guys just don't, <laughs> like, that is one of my biggest tips is don't try and be everywhere. Don't try and master everything. Pick one or two places. Um, or maybe even just pick one. So what I'll tell you guys that I do personally is with my Instagram, with my personal Instagram and my oils Instagram, I have them both linked to my Facebook. So my stories go to my Facebook and my posts go to my Facebook. So I'm not having to do the work twice. Most of the people that are friends with me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, but perhaps they are more active on Facebook. Um, so the main thing is pick your poison. Like you just cannot do everything well and different social media platforms are really going to suit different communication styles. So if you see a lot of people on Instagram on your team, you're like, Oh, I should be on Instagram. Like you don't have to be on Instagram all the time. That doesn't have to be your main thing. Just know that. So pick the one that suits your communication style and pick the one that you know where your people are at. Because if you're sharing on Instagram, but all of your friends are mainly on Facebook, like that's not really serving your business as well as it could be. So choose the flat platform that fits you best and then focus your attention there. So I personally think that Instagram is really great for people that are really visual, that like more video kind of style content. And then, I mean, do people, I don't even know if people with Young Living use Twitter, but, you know, that would obviously be best for people that can keep it short. So not going to be where I'm going to thrive. I, I talk a lot and <laughs> this is just not my place. 
Um, so the second thing you guys is, I know this seems really obvious, but be authentic. So it's really just as, as important as choosing the right platform is for, you know, representing yourself well online and your online self should really reflect who you are as a person and as a business person with Young Living. And I'll tell you guys a story. When we went down to Florida for our convention retreat in June, I got to meet um, a girl named Casey Capra for the first time. And we had talked a ton on Instagram before. And obviously we're like cross line friends. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're exactly as, the same as you are online. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm the same person. And she was like, I don't know. I kind of just thought like you would be different. And I was like, why would you think that? And she was like, I don't know. I just feel like people present themselves a certain way online. And I'm like, sorry to disappoint you, but what you get, what you see is what you get here. And I think that's the point of telling you guys that is that's the goal. Like the, your tribe of people are going to be attracted to you. They are, they're not going to leave you. And if they do, like that's not your people. So if you are being yourself online and that's pushing people away, then you are just thinning the herd. That is good attrition. Those are not the people that's not your tribe. Okay. So don't be afraid of being yourself and talking about the things that are important to you because you're afraid of annoying other people and like losing followers because that's not the goal. We don't care. We don't care. We don't serve and live our lives to serve other people. Um, and I always say if, you know, they're not paying my bills and they're not helping me raise my children, then they don't really get a say in anything else that goes on in my life, especially when I'm sharing online on my personal pages. So just keep that in mind. Um, so the third thing you guys is keep mind on your ratio. Um, and what I mean by that is you want your online interaction to not be all about promotion. You know, it's about building connections and, having organic friendships and conversations and sharing content and, you know, making friendships, um, you know, you want to keep that promotion under control. So for me, I, I typically try and do overall like a 20 to 80%, like 20%, um, kind of young living promotion type stuff. And then 80%, just the rest of the stuff that's going on in my lives or my life and my kids' lives and things like that. So Obviously you're going to have days that are more young living heavy or more days that are more like family heavy, but just overall, just try and be mindful of that ratio. Cause no one wants something shoved down their throat every day, you know? And I'm not saying like, you know, what we just talked about, you know, as far as you're not living to serve other people, but just think about it. You're not a billboard for young living. There's other parts of your life that are important and interesting. So talk about those two, because as a, a whole, you are building your brand. You are a brand. So think of yourself that way. You are not a walking billboard for young living. Um, and I don't think anyone on this call, any leader, I don't think anyone at young living would expect you to be either. So, um, I think the 80, 20 rule always pretty much works for just about anything in life. Um, so go with that. And, you know, you just don't want to feel like the person that's always pushing a sale because then you just won't ever get a sale. Um, because people don't like to feel like, they're being sold to. They want to feel like they actually have that connection with you. And this is network marketing. So the point is, is that you really do have to network. And I think that a lot of people think that building a business online is really easy. Like you can just share and then people sign up, but it's, it's very similar to building a business in person. You know, you are talking to people and having conversations and finding out people's pain points. And sometimes those conversations go on for months before people sign up with you. It's, for in my experience, I cannot speak to other people's, but my experience has been just like building in person. Um, I've signed up people in person. I've signed up people online and it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you have those conversations. Sometimes people are very interested and they don't sign up for like a year or two later. So, um, just always focus on having that organic conversation and really trying to genuinely form friendships with people because the part, the piece with young living will always come full circle. People always end up signing up. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. <laughs> so the fourth thing is it's not all about you. Um, and I know that sounds kind of funny when you first hear it, but stick with me here. So imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? Um, so get out there and flatter somebody, go tag somebody. Um, and, you know, you shouldn't try to be anyone but yourself, but watching the other leaders in this industry and understanding, you know, the whole social landscape that makes social interaction a lot easier. Um, 
So go follow people that inspire you and get an idea of how they talk about Young Living and the way that they share and the way that they speak compliantly. Um, when I first started with Young Living, that really, really helped me. And it honestly built my confidence a lot, just watching all of these other people get on there and speak their passion and, um, you know, speak with integrity around these products and not feel like they were pushing it down people's throats. I always found that really inspiring. And it, it really gave me kind of the roadmap of how to share in a way that really was authentic to myself, but also in a way that was compliant so that I'm not getting myself or my business in trouble. And, you know, I try and be that person for my team now so that they have an idea of things that they can go and share and put their own spin on it or, um, you know, how to speak compliantly, things like that. But also, um, this is kind of falls under, it's not all about you kind of topic, but when I'm building my brand, and how that comes back to Young Living is if I buy something from an Etsy shop, I tag them. If I buy something from, you know, wherever, you guys, it doesn't even have to be Young Living related. I always tag them because the majority of the time they're going to go and reshare your story into their story and you in, in turn can get followers from that. Um, so I always try and make it something that has a bunch of writing on it. Even if I'm talking, I put writing on it. I tag the people so that if they share it in their story, those people can just really easily read something. Um, and I know that sounds kind of like a silly tip, but a lot of times people will come and follow me and then sign up and I'll ask them like, where did you like find me? And they'll say, oh, your story was shared on this page. And like, I ended up following you from that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was like so long ago. So you just, you never know. You really never know. And it can't hurt for you to tag the heck out of everything. Like you go to Whole Foods, tag them. <laughs> like you go to this place, tag them. It really doesn't matter. Tag all the things, okay? Um, okay. So now on the flip side, it is all about you. And I know that's confusing, right? But, um, when you have a small business, it's really important to recognize that people are pr probably like really focused on your rep reputation, um, as well as who you are as a person. So, you know, if you appear really disorganized or uptight or unprofessional or, super gossipy, like that not only affects your personal bottom line, but it also affects your business. So, um, kind of a rule of thumb just to keep in mind is, you know, like you can be funny, but try not to be crass and snarky, but not a bully, you know, and informative, but also willing to learn. You want to come across as someone that is teachable. So, um, I know that's a lot to kind of think about and unpack there, but just think of the way that you, um, present yourself online and are you offensive? Are you, um, ostracizing people? You know, um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so just kind of think of it in that way. Um, okay. Number five. So we're going to picture this. So people want to do business with people that they know you guys, honestly, I, I truly believe that I do think that people would rather buy essential oils from someone that they know and trust than some random person online. Um, but the part of that is, is that if they feel really connected to someone online and they do know this friend, but their friend isn't really like doing a lot with it, or their friend doesn't educate a lot, like, of course, they're going to go and sign up with that other person online that they trust and watch and feel connected to. But if you're that person for them that they know in person and you are consistent and you're educating and you're kind and you're accessible, they're going to want to sign up with you. They're going to want to give their business to you. Um, so another thing to think about with that is they have no, so this is for, if you're dealing with strangers or perhaps people that, um, you know, are more of like acquaintances or you haven't talked to in a really long, long time, or maybe you've lost touch with. So they really have no way of knowing you unless you paint or, you know, Instagram that picture for them. So, you know, tell them what your team is like and show them your nighttime routine with your kids or show them your makeup routine or, you know, walk them through how to make a roller or just give this really amazing testimonial. Um, for me, the rule of thumb with stuff like that is showing people is really better. You're showing is better when learning is involved. Um, you know, have, I don't know, people on your team, you like what Chelsea has been doing with these like reels classes, going through and showing everybody like how they're using supplements and what supplements and then going through and like sharing all of these people on your team. You know, those are really visual things and it shows a little insight into your team from the team environment, but then you're also 
on your stories or in your posts or on your IGTVs showing people what every day looks like for you. So um, I, I truly do think that people want to do business with people that they know, um, but you have to show them how to know you. You have to allow people to come into your life and part of this young living world as well. So um, some realistic tips that you guys can really just turn around and use today. Um, the first one would be to encourage people to engage on your posts and your stories. So the way that you can do that is if you put a post up, ask, you know, you can put whatever caption, but then ask a question, um, you know, what are you guys up to this weekend? Or what's your favorite oil? Give people an opportunity to engage in your post. They might not, but keep trying because you never know when they might engage. So I remember in the beginning when I first started my social media and even after, but when I first started sharing oils, I would get really discouraged the first few times where I would ask a question and like, no one would respond. <laughs> and I was like, gosh, I feel like such a loser. And then I like, wouldn't want to do it again. And I, and I wouldn't, and it took a long time to build up that confidence. And I mean, obviously now I'm like, whatever, I don't care, but I just want you guys to know that, that you're not alone. If you feel like that, if you're like, no one answered that last one, I'm not going to do it again. I promise you do it again. Like it will get better every time. It'll get easier every time and people will start engaging. So if you're noticing like, oh, no one really like responds to, let's say my personal care kind of products, but they respond to things as far as your kids go, then perhaps incorporate some of the Young Living Kids line. So just kind of think of different ways to get creative with your audience and with what you have going on in your life. Um, another way to get people to engage is, to um, use what Instagram or Facebook or whatever platform you're on uses. So for example, Instagram, a really great way to get people to engage on stories is to use the poll function. I find that people are much more likely to engage in a poll than pretty much anything else. Um, they have question boxes where people can just type in an answer or they have like the, the quiz one where they can pick one of whatever amount of different options. It's a really great tool, you guys, as someone that's trying to build um, a social media presence, not necessarily like grow your following, but really get your, the followers that you already have to notice what you're doing, get to know them. This is like the easiest thing that you can do. And you can do it daily. Every single day you can get on there and ask something different. It does not have to be oils related. It can be, where would you rather vacation the beach or the mountains? Would you rather go to Disney world or Disneyland? You know, getting an idea of who follows you and why they follow you is really going to help the way that you present your young living business online and the things that you decide to educate on. So you'll use the free tools that whatever platform you're using gives you, because it's going to be a huge path to success for you. Um, along with that, you want to mix engagement kind of things like we just talked about with calls to action. So I don't know, you could say something like, if you want to learn about X, Y, Z, shoot me a message and I'll get you all that information. Or um, a girl on our team, Ashley, is doing um, some roller giveaways. You know, first five people to do any order of any amount is going to get their pick of any of these rollers and you can fill it with, I'll fill it with whatever you want out of these three options. You know, call to action um, and have like minimums that people have so that, you know, it's something that they, they want to get on before it's gone. So mixing engagement kind of things with calls to action is a really good way to also get that kind of engagement that you're looking for. Um, but honestly, you guys, the biggest thing is just be you. And I want to ask you guys something. So if you had to pick, do you think it's better or do you think it's more important to be polished and professional or real and accessible? Which one do you think? Yeah, it's, that's pretty easy, right? Like when it comes to connecting with people on social media, your primary goal should be to be accessible. That, that, that's your primary goal. So if you feel like at any time, what you're sharing is not real to you, most likely you're not coming across as accessible because people feel that. Um, so if you ever feel like that, reevaluate and say, how can I be more like me? How can I present more of myself? Um, because that's, that's where I want to attract the people that want to be with me on my team, engaging with me. Um, and just think about it, you guys, you're not out here selling TVs and cars. You're selling the idea 
that people out there can do what you do. That's, that's really important to think about you guys that, that they can have that same belief in natural products that you do and that they can have a home-based business like you do. And the key to that is to present, you know, present yourself as real and relatable, authentic and vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> yes. Vulnerable. And I want to know like, who, who is that hard for? And there's, that's not a bad thing. Who is it hard for? Is anyone here that they feel like it's hard to be vulnerable either in person with people or online, or is that something that comes really easy for you? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really normal and I want to ease your fears a little bit, you guys, like we are human beings and we have, this is a network marketing business and it's made up of other humans. So present yourself that way. You're not superhuman. You don't have to know everything. You're not ever going to know everything. And that is okay because I don't know about you guys, but I want to be on a team of people that just act like normal human beings. And I don't feel like I'm not good enough to be with them. And that's why I love this team so much because I've never, I've never felt like that, that I wasn't smart enough or I wasn't growing fast enough, or I didn't know enough. And, you know, we all, we all have things that we struggle with. And I think it's really refreshing to be on a team of people that, you know, can show that. Um, but the underlying goal of everything you communicate is to really have people say, Hey, if this person can do it, I can too. And it, it's not necessarily just about the business, but Hey, if that person can switch over their laundry detergent, so can I, if that person can switch out toxic candles for a diffuser, like I can do that too. Or, you know, if this person is sharing online and starting network marketing, I can do that too. And, you know, it isn't about people saying like, wow, I wish I was good enough to do what they're doing. That's not what we want. So, you know, if you think just overall, if your goal, if you think your goal has to be to impress other people with how special you are or how much, you know, or how successful you are at this business, then we've missed the point entirely. You know, we want everyone that we touch to come away thinking like I can do that because truly this business isn't about the ability to duplicate ourselves; It's about the belief the belief in the ability to duplicate ourselves. So, you know, I'm not saying, saying be out there, be so vulnerable that you're sharing every little detail about your life and every challenge and, you know, having a pity party, but I'm just saying, be real about having challenges. Um, because we do still want to inspire people to join us and no one wants to join a team of yours, <laughs> but I think it's more about saying like, if you are going through this, like I am here with you, I'm in the trenches with you. And even if I'm not, I'm here to support you because I know how that feels. Um, and if this process of ditching and switching feels overwhelming, I felt that too. I'm here with you. I'm here to walk you through it. And it doesn't have to be done all at once. It can be done once a month, you know, when you run out of a product and we can do this slowly and we can fit your budget and whatever it comes down to, you know, we want people to come away saying like, I can do that too. And we have the opportunity every single day through social media to show people that. And that's personally like why I love social media so much. And I'm, I'm an extrovert. You guys, I love being with people. I love doing things in person. It like fills my soul. But the reality is, is we don't get to be with our teams every day and we don't get access to so many people every day, like we do on social media. So saying I'm not good at social media, or I don't have time to do social media. That's just an excuse for why we're not out there growing our businesses, because it is so easy. Like you guys put up a little story while, while you're peeing, like <laughs> that easy. Like, <laughs> I mean, everyone can find a few minutes a day to get online, but think about it. I, I mean, I'm serious. Like if you are making a role or something that might seem really insignificant to you because you're, you know, you're way deep into the young living lifestyle, it might not be that obvious to other people. The other day, someone told me that she was on a call and the person was talking about, you know, okay, just real quick, you can make a veggie capsule with this and blah, 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 blah. And she was like, wait, what? Like, wh how do you make a veggie capsule? And cause I mean, she's only a few months into it. And that was actually like an eye opener for me because I was like, wow, wow. There are, there are people, a lot of people in our business that are not this far into it with us. And we have such a good opportunity online 
to show people how to do these things. And the things that might seem very simple to us can be huge for other people. So just think about that. If you're remaking a roller or you're filling your diffuser or you're, um, you know, filling your supplements for the week, take people along that with you, whether it is through your stories or you're doing a post, allow people into that part of your life because all those little things will add up. So for example, if you're sharing these things every day, and then let's say in two weeks, you decide to have a class, you're probably going to get more traction and attendance at that class. If you're sharing every day on social media, maybe not just about the class, but just in general, social or young living type things, they're more likely to show up to that class because you have given them exposure to this for 14 straight days versus sending them a message being like, Hey, like I'm going to have this soap making class at my house. Like, do you want to come? Okay. Yeah. By that time, she's probably going to forget about it. And then you're going to text her the day of or the day before, and she'll already have other plans. But if you're in someone's face on social media every single day talking about these products, then they're not going to forget about it. So just think about it from that perspective. So maybe you are much more on team. Like I'm building in person, I'm doing in-person events. Like that is great. I am with you. I love in-person events, but think of social media as an added tool to enhance that part of your business and the way that you grow that business. Because um, I was on a Young Living call today. They had this new year kickoff and Platinums and above were all invited to go to it, but they also had a virtual option. So I was watching it and Jacob Young was basically he, I'm going to butcher it, but he was basically quoting his dad, Gary Young, and talking about if, you know, we can still stay true to our roots and our legacy, but also have an open mind to moving forward and growing our business. And when I was thinking about the call tonight, I, I really felt that because I was like, I want to be in person and doing all of these things, but I, we also can't forget how valuable this side of things can be as well. So I'm not saying stop doing all of your in-person things and just get online, but look at it as a tool. And on the flip side, if you are not doing in-person things and you're only doing online, think of how that perhaps can put you in a hole. Um, so I think the best way, I know this is a social media savvy tip, but I, I do think the best way that we can be growing our businesses is combining both of those because it's really going to serve us very, very well. Um, does anyone have any specific questions on social media savvy tips? I, um, I tried to kind of bring some new stuff into it because I know we've done some of these classes before. So I wanted to give some new points. Um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or unmute yourself. Or if anyone else has any tips that they want to add, please, please do. Somebody, I'm going to interject. Um, I was going through the chat. Somebody asked, um, where do you get the ideas to share? And some, some of the, of us, I'll say us, uh, are having difficulty kind of like finding some things to post. So do you have some ideas regarding that specifically? And you got to shout out Ivy that you always have fantastic ideas in that question, which you do, my friend. So feel free to share as well. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the two main questions I'm seeing. Okay. So for things that I think of to share, is that kind of what you mean? Like, how do I think of what to share daily? What, what are you doing in your life? Like, seriously, that's, that's what I share. Um, I used to really plan out my content a lot better, but it stressed me out. And I think that that works for some people, but that does not work for me. Cause then I like just overthink it. And then I'm like, I put this pressure on myself and I'm just like, Oh gosh, that's like hanging over my head. So I'm, I'm really better in the moment. You know, if I am making my Ningxia drink, my, you know, little zing bomb or whatever, I'll be like, okay, let me grab my phone. Let me just record that real quick because that's, that's true to my life. It's not something that's like set up and coordinated and all of these things. And I think that really does take a lot of the pressure out. So, you know, if my, I'm giving my kids their vitamins, like, and I think about, it, I'm going to just grab my phone and just record them taking their vitamins. It's like their favorite thing to do in the day. Um, so that's personally how I go about it. If there's things I know that are coming up on the team. So I knew that we were starting this Ningxia golden challenge. Um, so I started just talking about that several days early. Um, and that's something that I'm trying to actively do this month, knowing that we have calls coming up the week prior, the full seven days before I'm going to be trying to talk about 
things that are going to relate to that class. So then when it comes time for that class, people are going to be like, oh yeah, okay. I want to learn more about this. This is interesting. Um, okay. Do you record it to your stories or reels? No, I just, I mean, I typically do stories. I, I do do reels, but I typically do stories. Um, I just get the most engagement there. I just feel like people comment the most and they ask questions the most there. And I think it's because it just feels much more, um, personal and relaxed. I don't know about you guys. I just feel, I personally feel like I can like comment back to people on their stories more than I'd be likely to comment on their reels, but that's just me. Um, and I think that's something like what I'm talking about that you guys can ask your audience and poll them. Do you guys like stories or posts better? Do you like stories or reels better and kind of see what people like? Um, but yeah, I just post pretty much in the moment. And sometimes like today I did a reel and I, I knew I had to remake my household cleaner. I knew I had to remake, like dilute my laundry soap. I knew I had to remake an immunity roller. So I was like, all right, I'm going to make a reel real quick and speed all of these up. Um, which you guys, <laughs> if you go and watch that and look really closely, I'm spilling like thieves cleaner all over the place, all over the place. It was completely covered my counter. I'm like, I've been doing this for four and a half years. Why am I so bad at this? But it's sped up so fast that you like can't even notice. I was like, whatever, it's fine. So that's what I mean, you guys. Just roll with the dumb stuff that happens because it happens to all of us. <laughs> and it's fine. I think it makes you more relatable. Um, okay, so a question I'm seeing is, how do you convert from someone who follows slash comments to someone who wants to try Young Living? I've been talking with a few people for months and not sure where to go from here. Um, so that kind of comes down to creating relationships with people because I have made some really good friends just being online um, or reconnected with really with old acquaintances that have now become good friends just from creating relationships online. And, you know, sometimes they'll share something and I, I'll say things like, if I sent you an immunity roller, would you use it? if, you know, if they're talking about their kids always being sick or, um, getting headaches when they clean or whatever, like it's about like paying attention to what's going on with people and not being afraid to ask them. And I find that that language works really well. I think Allison, is it from Eric worry? If I do this, will you, isn't that that language from him? I think, I don't remember, but you guys, no one has ever said no. So just be willing to put yourself out there. Um, and offer something with no strings attached. Because honestly, when I, if I send someone an immunity roller and if I drop an oil off at their house to diffuse because their kid is congested, like I am not expecting them to turn around and sign up the next day. I'm doing that from a genuine place in my heart because I believe in these products. And I know that if they try them and get their hands on them, they will too. Um, oh, Richard. Okay. Yeah. But that kind of language works really well. If I did this, would you this? So um, to kind of answer your question with talking to people, I think just making sure that you're engaging with them and paying attention to what's going on with their lives, instead of just assuming that they're just always watching what you're doing. Um, and then if the opportunity presents itself, use that kind of language and don't be afraid to follow up with people. I'm not always the best with following up with people, but, um, I do think that, you know, it's something to think about if they, if they say no, they don't want to try something and you see their kids sick again, just ask like, Hey, I'm still willing to send you that immunity roller. If you wanted it, like no strings attached. Um, it's just really worked for our family and don't be afraid to give your testimonials. Um, um, <laughs> does anyone else have questions? Ivy, do you have anything to add? Cause Ivy is definitely the queen of reels. That's for sure. You know what to talk. <laughs> Are you muted? She's muted. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got a new laptop for Christmas. I'm still figuring it out. I'm really moving up in the world. I got a new phone this week, got my laptop, feeling fancy. Um, I would say, I feel like my biggest tip for social media is like, especially with um, the question, who just asked that question? that you just answered. It was me. Oh, okay. Um, I feel like honestly, so I've had the majority of people, kind of like Jen said, people that have known me like through high school and things that find my account and follow me. So they kind of already know who I am. 
But I've also had like random people enroll on my team that have just followed me that I've responded to their stories or I just commented on their post, whatever. Um, but it did take a lot of time. Like I never pressured anybody or like sent them links to anything unless they asked like people will sign up with you when their time is ready because like I've talked to a girl for like six months and then she was like hey I want to do this I'm signing up I'm using your link or whatever so I feel like talking to them about stuff outside of just young living is really important um and be really careful with samples because I've made the mistake of sending samples to people who just wanted to use free things and then ended up like signing up with somebody else or signing up with a different company. Um, so I don't send samples anymore unless it's somebody that like I've talked I've talked to for like over three or four months and they genuinely seem interested and I would go through their followers list. Like I don't mean to be this like in a petty way, but go through who they're following because I had a girl like that followed everybody down the line that was like a Young Living member. So I'm guessing she was probably just asking everyone for samples, but I give samples to my friends all the time, drop off care packages for people, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but be careful who you send samples to because that can be a waste of your precious time. And, you know, people are kind of scummy sometimes. So that would be my best advice. And for like posting ideas, I scroll the reels page or like on Instagram. Um, if you go to the search button, trying to figure out how to work my new phone because I don't have a home button anymore. Um, if you go to like the search right here, it'll pop up like recommended posts of like things that are recommended for you. So I'll scroll through there and look at different, like there's like reels ideas and things like that. And then I'll make my own twist on it. So I never like directly copy anybody's stuff because obviously like you want to be your own person and things like that. But I take inspiration from this page all the time. Like even if it's um, like Brock Johnson, I don't know if you guys follow him. He does like Instagram coaching and things like that. And all of his stuff is amazing and he like even his reels ideas like I'll save the audio and then interpret it in my own words for like my niche or whatever for Instagram so I would highly recommend following Brock Johnson if you don't because he gives so many amazing tips on like Instagram and reels and when you should post and just all kinds of good information so I would follow him for sure because I learn a lot from him but I think that's all I have so the other thing you guys is, um, okay. And <laughs> you guys, you, okay. I am a three and I'm a red personality. So when I say things that are like, seem really blunt, just know that it's like, not really like that. <laughs> I just like, it just, I have to be straightforward about things. So let's say you have 300 followers, but you're like frantically trying to grow your following and like putting like a million hours a week into making reels, you guys, that is not a good use of your time. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, like if you love doing reels and that's like real fun for you, it doesn't take a lot of time, like go for it. But unless every single person that follows you is on your team, then you still have a good warm market that you're sitting on that you don't need to be out here trying to like go viral. Obviously like that's great if that happens, but I'm just saying, where is your time better suited? Is it better suited on people with your warm market? Or like if you're, if that's where you're putting most of your energy, or are you creating content to just serve, hopefully gaining new followers? So I want you guys to think about that because honestly, for the last two years, I have really done just about nothing to grow my following. I think my following has pretty much sat around the same for the last two years, like give or two. So I have, I think almost 16,000 followers. And I think two years ago I had 14. Um, so like, I really have not put much energy or time into growing my following and guess what? It has not hurt my business at all. And granted, I obviously have a larger following, but there are tons of people on my team that do not have that following that are creating content to serve mainly serve their warm market or the people on their team. And they're killing it with their signups, with their 
subscribe to save percentage um, with their retention of their members. So it's just something that I want you guys to think about. Like you do not have to have a lot of followers. Um, and if you're putting so much of your time and energy into trying to gain more followers, you're losing a really big opportunity to serve the warm market that you have right in front of you. Um, so I just want you guys to to know that so that it can kind of take some of that pressure off of you, not to say that that's not worth your time or you shouldn't be trying to grow your following. If you're trying to be online, I just want you guys to know that it's not, it's not something that has to be like your main goal on social media is to grow your following because it, it's going to burn you out and it's going to just have this huge cloud of pressure over you all the time. And then if something doesn't perform well, you're going to be really hard on yourself. And that's not what I want. Like this is supposed to be fun and exciting and like, soul filling, you know, like that's what we all, I think, want out of this business. So, um, just something to think about. Um, and that's not at all to discourage you guys not to do reels or to do things to grow your followings, whether it's like a giveaway or collaboration with someone else, like absolutely do that. All I'm saying is don't put a million hours of your week into trying to grow your following in whatever way you do that. Um, because you, you have, really good resources and um, potential right in front of you. So I just want you guys to know that because I know that in the social media world, it can be really easy to compare yourself to other people doing things or to look around and think like, I'm not as creative as her, or, you know, my following isn't growing as quickly as hers, or I'm not getting as many signups as her. And I think that trying to like keep up with the Joneses on social media can be really I mean, it makes it not fun. I mean, I've gone through phases where I'm like, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> it's not fun when you like put that pressure on yourself. So if you love doing reels or you love doing giveaways or collaborating with people, girl, keep doing it. Do it. If that's is working for you, um, then that's awesome. And if that's helping grow your team, do it. But I just want you guys to know you do not have to have all that pressure. Um, but there's an, there's a book I want you guys to look into. It's very small. And when I went to, I won a trip called Summer Hustle a few summers ago. And when I was there, one of the diamonds, um, Stephanie Morham, she's in Canada. She gave this book to me. It's called Freakish, Freakishly Effective Social Media for Network Marketing. And up here, it says how to stop wasting your time on things that don't work and start doing what does. Um, and I have read over this book so many times and it's just interesting to have like little books like this on hand, because there's certain times in my business where something I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's like an aha moment. And then a year later I will read it. And I'm like, that doesn't, that's not really like relevant to my business anymore, but this next part is. So it's, it's really interesting to kind of see how social media evolves for yourself and then also for your team. Um, so yeah, I'll post the title here and I highly recommend getting it. I think it's on Amazon. Um, and it's short, it's, it's laid out really well. And I think it's definitely worth buying. Um, so it's by Ray and Jessica. Okay. Yeah. It looked like he was about to auto correct a hidden. I was like, no, that's not right. Um, does anyone have any questions or feel like there's anything that they, um, need help with because there's some good social media people on here to help you. We have tons of good social media people on our team. Um, sorry, I'm reading through the comments. <laughs> yeah, Michelle. So I'm reading Michelle's comment, Michelle Jernigan. She said, that was the biggest game changer for me to hear a few months ago. All of the Instagram gurus push getting new followers when in reality, my business would explode if every single follower of mine was a customer. So, I mean, it is true. I mean, I'm like, if 15,000 people would sign up on my team, that'd be great. <laughs> um, but just think of it as percentages, you guys. Um, just try and reach, you know, 10% of your followers in the next six months. I mean, can you imagine? That would be huge for your business. Um, and also, so I know that we kind of didn't really touch on this and we're going to wrap up here in a second, but pretty much everyone in Young Living, every like social media or um, like network marketing kind of person will tell you that the best customer 
um, you can get is the one you already have. So think of the people on your team. Maybe you have a small team right now um, and that's okay. Or maybe you don't have anyone on your team right now, but act on social media as if you did. So when you're thinking about educating and say getting your subscribe to save up and you're using social media as that tool, act as if you're, you have a huge team and you have to educate the masses, but you also have to educate a wide variety of people with different knowledge bases. So the beginner that doesn't know how to create a roller to someone that's really far into it that would love to hear the science behind sulfur zyme. So kind of think about that when you're educating. So don't, you know, every day show up with something new and different um, and interesting. And if you guys don't follow Ivy, I highly recommend following her on Instagram. I think she does such a wonderful job at this in really catering to every kind of person that could be on her team, whether they're a mom, um, single high school, um, her grandma, her brother, like whoever it is. I think she does a really good job of catering to that. But also, like I said, the knowledge base, she's really good at really bringing things down to a very basic level, but then also, you know, for people that have been doing this a while, or maybe just are super into it that know a lot. Um, so yeah, she is definitely a really good person to follow. If you, <laughs> her grandpa recently stole her lavender. Um, so if you are maybe brand new to social media and you're kind of like, I don't know where to start. I think someone like Ivy or Michelle Jernigan, they would be great people to go ahead and follow because I think that they do a really good job with that kind of education. That's, um, does very well for their team, um, and both growing their team and retaining their team. So th both of those things I think are equally important and social media is a great tool to do that in, because like I said earlier, you can reach people every day, multiple times a day. And that's another thing is it's great because someone might not be seeing your stories one day. So when you show up the next day to advertise that class again, they're going to be there. Um, maybe they will be there that day or the next day. And that's why consistency is super important. Um, um, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Consistency. Okay. So I don't remember who was talking about this. I feel like it was Brock Johnson. Um, I'm just obsessed with him. I've said his name like 12 times, but he was talking about how, like he makes three posts a day. And I saw that on his Instagram once and I was like, absolutely not. I have no time for that. I work a full-time job besides doing Young Living and also like have a bunch of other stuff to do for, you know, like cooking dinner and all of that. I'm sure you understand, but I, he like included in this post, like do what's consistent for you. Like if you're going to post two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays or whatever, just two times a week period, make sure your followers know that because even if you're posting two times a week or whatever, they can still count on you posting two times a week. Like I try to post I don't know, like three reels a week into um, carousel posts, which are like multiple pictures in a post, um, like over the weekdays. On the weekends, I kind of give myself a break because I get so stressed out about posting every single day that then it's not fun and I don't even want to do it at all. So pick what's consistent for you. It does not have to look like all of these, you know, Instagram gurus or whatever who are posting up teen times a day. Like nobody has time for that because that's their full time job. Um, so pick what's consistent for you, even posting one day a week, like every Sunday, I'm going to post whatever, then your followers can count on that. Um, and then you can share it to your stories or whatever. And then if they get a bonus post that week, then that's just a little extra spice they get. But you can, you don't have to do what, like posting three times a day is just unreal for a lot of people. So I feel like picking what's consistent for you is a good place to start because you don't have to be doing everything that everybody else is doing. And that's all. <laughs> okay, you guys, do you feel like this was helpful for you? Do you feel like you still have unanswered questions? Um, I feel like we should have some like homework for tomorrow, some social media <laughs> homework for tomorrow. <laughs> I was um, thinking that. Right? Yeah. Anyone have any ideas? I was like, are we all going to just go post a bunch of questions and our homework is to do that and then answer everything, um, go think of one thing and post it. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I think that would be good. Like all the you things. guys are on inside. Does um, Facebook have like polls and stuff? You can they do. Polls. 
Okay. You can, um, it'll up, like I usually do it from Instagram and then it goes to Facebook and I have people answer by both. Mm -hmm. Um, and Facebook will, um, tell you when somebody's answered unlike okay. Instagram. But. So how about that? You guys, if you, um, are on Instagram or Facebook, try using out some of the engagement tools tomorrow or tonight, or whenever you want. Um, but try using that, get to know the people that are following you. Even if you're like, I have 200 followers and I know all of them, like, do you really know all of them? Do you know everything about them? Because there's probably a lot of interesting things that you can learn about them. So, um, let's do that. Let's tomorrow or tonight go and use some of those features, whether it's one of the quizzes, the question box, um, the poll and try and get in the habit of doing that once a week. There's a girl on my team that we are talking about, like some, some strategies for her. And she was like, I just, I don't really know what to post, when to post. And I was like, well, how about like every Sunday night you do a poll? Do you want to learn about this this week or this this week? And I was like, and that can kind of help you just guide your week without like, you know, having to keep you to like a set timeline for the whole month. Like you can just have an idea. And as things come up, you'll remember to actually share whatever that is because you're using stuff. So try and get in the habit of just using those tools more because it also helps your algorithm for your, um, your pages too. So all right, you guys, we right. are just about out of time. Thank you guys so much for joining in on this. Um, I hope it was helpful. Um, and if you guys want another one in the future, let us know. And we're happy to do that. We can get some much more social media savvy people on here to host it um, other than myself. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys, um, sorry, I'm reading the comments. I hope this was helpful. And thank you guys for coming. Jen, thank you so much. And Ivy. Um, thank you so much for sharing those. Those are such great tips. And I'll have one more. Um, if you have problems posting, go ahead and do the five, four, three, two, one thing that Mel Robbins talks about. It is so helpful for like analysis paralysis. So go, if you're like, I'm super nervous, go five, four, three, two, one post. And we'll leave you with that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. Have a good night.